I'm Marty Stauffer. Last time, we met Raven, a black band stallion who fights to protect his family of wild mares and colts. Raven is likely a descendant of horses brought by the Spanish in the 1600s. Or perhaps he is descended of a sacred animal sent by the Creator. On horseback, the Indian people created an unparalleled culture. Many of their horses wandered off and became wild. A few still survive atop the Arrowhead Mountains in Montana. In spring, Raven's Band migrates to the high country with three colorful new colts. Raven's youngest mare is a beautiful Palomino who has a colt the color of an arrowhead sunrise. Their peaceful life is shattered as Bureau of Land Management cowboys search the mountain trying to capture Mustangs. Raven and his band are trapped, and worse, his strawberry roan colt is missing. Cruelty and neglect result in the death of horses, including Raven's Gruya colt, left to rot in a landfill. Raven's band is finally released as winter is setting in. He has lost two of his three foals, but life will go on. The surviving Mustangs once again face the cold challenge of a Montana winter as we continue our story, Year of the Mustang. Snow dominates the landscape, lying heavy and deep on the arrowheads. Some horses, mostly bachelor stallion bands, choose to brave the deep snows and sub-zero temperatures in the high country. Even lower on the mountainside, snow still accumulates, and finding enough to eat requires extra effort. One winter, over two decades ago, horses were marooned in snow so deep it claimed the life of every foal and many of the older horses. In the shadow of the Bighorn Mountains, below the level of perpetual snow, Flash is grazing on brittle grass and coarse sage. His mare is nearby, with their filly, born in mid-October. The foal's two-year-old brother grazes protectively next to his little sister. The October filly has survived the harsh winter weather. Further down the mountain, in the desert lowlands, 
Raven rubs on a juniper snag. Although he has recovered his Palomino mare, their strawberry roan colt is not with her. The BLM told us that the colt ran away from its mother during the fall roundup. But the truth is, the colt fell or was driven off this cliff, broke its back, and was shot. Despite the loss of two colts, Raven's band is rebuilding. The buckskin mare has given birth to a filly we name Mahogany. The Gruya mare also has a brand new filly named Smokey. Mule deer are the primary prey of mountain lions. Lions also kill wild horse foals if they get the chance. In one area of Nevada, mountain lions are known to kill up to 70% of the foal crop. The alert buckskin mare makes an attack unlikely. Mountain lions rely almost exclusively on ambush techniques to make a kill. After a gestation period of nearly a year, the Palomino moves away from her band one afternoon to find a secluded spot to foal. Like most wild horses, she will give birth at night and rejoin her band the next day. In mid-morning, she returns with a newborn unlike any other in the arrowheads. We name her nearly white colt, Cloud. On his birthday, Cloud climbs the mountain with his family to find water. The water holes are empty or inaccessible now, so snow, piled in drifts under the Douglas fir canopy, becomes their water source. Diamond has become a sturdy yearling. His older brother, Little Raven, is gone from the band, probably driven out by Raven when the buckskin mare came into estrus. In this way, wild horses avoid inbreeding. Cloud will nurse for three or four minutes several times an hour, rapidly adding weight to his 70-pound frame. It will be several weeks before he is as independent as his sisters. For all newborn foals, the simple act of laying down is difficult. Like his mother and his grandmother, he would have been a prized Indian horse because colorfully painted symbols would stand out on his light-colored coat. A beauty like Cloud might have inspired one of the Indians' favorite pastimes, horse stealing.
favorite horse was sometimes tethered to the wrist of its owner to make it more difficult to steal. A clever thief was one who got away undetected. His calling card was sometimes a pair of worn out moccasins. The unwritten message, I wore out my moccasins walking, now I ride. You can wear out your moccasins finding more horses. Successful braves would ride night and day, putting as much distance as possible between themselves and their victims. Great honor was bestowed upon those returning home unharmed with horses, the most prized possession of native people. Many Crow Indians believe the wild horses of the Arrowheads are their ancestral ponies. In June, Raven and his band are migrating to the high country. Characteristically, the mares lead the way, while Raven protects the rear. Over a dozen family bands, as well as groups of bachelor stallions, gather again to graze the alpine meadows. Spring blooming pasque flowers give way to shaded summer hillsides of larkspur and huge beds of lupin flowers. This Mustang mare learned, probably from her mother, that lupin, poisonous at other times of the year, is safe to eat now. The resourceful Mustangs even dig for their own minerals. Cloud learns where to find this natural substitute for the salt and mineral blocks humans give to their domestic horses. Mahogany licks the calcium rich limestone rock. Not far away, another black band stallion, opposite, named for the white boots on his right front and left back legs, spars with other stallions. <laughs> Nearby, Little Raven, Raven's two-year-old son, watches. Only months before, Little Raven expressed his attraction to his father's Palomino mare. His submissive, teeth-clacking gesture did not work to appease Raven. Now he is alone for the first time. It won't be long, however, before he has company. The Sabino's behavior will not go undetected. opposite returns, he sees Little Raven smelling the aroma of the roan mare from afar. 
opposite examines the three-year-old. For an animal with a sense of smell significantly keener than ours, the odor must be revealing. Opposite will soon kick the young stud out of the band. Unpredictable weather on the mountaintop can turn a sunny day into a whiteout in a hurry. But the Mustangs don't seem to notice. Cloud is growing strong. Though two months younger, he is nearly as tall as Smokey. When another band stallion approaches, both foals submissively clack their teeth, as if to say, don't hurt me, I'm little. <coughs> Birth color does not guarantee what a colt will look like as an adult. Mahogany's solid coat is roaning out as white hairs mix with brown. Thick fog enshrouds the alpine meadows and the horses grow indistinct and ghost-like. Just as quickly, the fog blows through and Cloud is up and ready to play. Surprisingly, he picks a yearling from another band to spar with. At just two months, he's unusually bold. Too bold for his mother, who breaks off play before it gets rough. The Gruya looks remarkably like Diamond's dead brother. As foals, the two played like this all the time. Mock battles to develop necessary stallion skills. Opposite Sabino's son is on his own, play fighting with Little Raven and the deposed band leader King. These bachelor alliances may last for a few days or many years. Their vocalizations, behaviors, and body postures communicate subtle and not so subtle messages. battle, part ballet, the dance of the stallions atop the arrowheads is a sight never to be forgotten. <laughs> Cloud takes it all in and in true band stallion fashion lays his ears back fiercely driving the visiting foal away. There was abundant snowfall over the winter. Much of it remains even into midsummer. 
The runoff keeps the water holes filled to capacity. Little Raven and the Sabino hang out together. As new bachelors, they're on the bottom rung of the bachelor society hierarchy. Gone forever is the security and protection of being in a stable family band. The two enjoy a last few splashes. Raven's band is coming. Horses may visit the water hole once or twice a day. They drink their fill, perhaps a gallon or more at a time. If another dominant band is not waiting, there's plenty of time just to play and enjoy the cool water. Mud and soft sand coat sensitive skin and protects from biting flies. King, the former band stallion, is on the prowl for mares. Raven gets distracted and nearly injured while sparring with another stallion. It's just the opening for which King is waiting. Consort with a Gruya bachelor, King makes his move. Together, the two stallions engineer the theft of Raven's mares. Once they get the unwilling band moving, King unseats the other bachelor, claiming the entire band for himself. When Raven returns, he finds his family missing. Diamond does his best to delay King until his father can catch up, but he's no match for an adult horse. With Raven in pursuit, they disappear over the ridge.
Moments later, Raven appears on the hilltop, driving his band safely away. King retreats to the water hole. By year's end, however, he will succeed in finding a mare. Meanwhile, Flash is fighting off a serious challenge from the same Bay Bachelor he fought a year earlier. Some Bachelor stallions seem to shadow one band. This is the case with the Bay. Taking no chances, the experienced Sorrel Stallion drops his head low, snaking his mare and the October filly safely away. Cloud watches and learns, perhaps one day, he too will become a great band stallion like his father. Raven's band has been through a great deal in the past year. Their incredible adventures together have strengthened their bond. Like their ancestors before them, they have survived and even flourished in the face of adversity passing on knowledge from one generation to the next. The future for Mustangs is looking much brighter. New managers are more knowledgeable and caring. Gentler roundup techniques still promise to keep horse numbers in line with range conditions. I hope that Mustangs will always grace our wide western landscape and that every year will be the year of the Mustang. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America. <laughs> <laughs>